Welcome to the laboratory. This video is a demonstration of the standard plate count technique, also known as serial dilutions and a calculation of the colony forming units per mil. The aim of the standard plate count is to, is to determine the number of living, that is viable cells, in a culture. So in theory, one bacterial or yeast cell should give rise to one colony and it's the same for fungi. One spore or one mycelium unit should be equivalent to one colony forming on your plate. So when performing serial dilutions, you need to use aseptic technique. So that means you need to make sure that your bench has been wiped down with disinfectant and the Bunsen turned on. You've been provided with five McCartney bottles, each containing nine mils of diluent. Diluent is just another word for dilution solution. So that is the solution that you're going to perform your cereal dilutions in. On your bench, you should also have a culture of Micrococcus luteus. So you can see this McCartney bottle contains a bacterial culture, is cloudy, and Micrococcus is also yellow in colour. So this is our stock solution, and this is the solution we're going to calculate the number of viable cells for by completing the serial dilution. So we're going to perform 10 to the minus 1 dilutions, so 1 in 10 dilutions from 10 to the minus 1 to 10 to the minus 5. So the first thing you should do is label each of the McCartney bottles with the correct dilution factor. So to do that, just grab your texter and label each of the bottles with the dilution factor. So 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, and finally 10 to the minus 5. So if we're performing 1 in 10 dilutions, that means we need to add 1,000 microliters or 1 mil of the stock culture to our first tube to collect or to create a 1 in 10 dilution. And then serially dilute that into the other bottles using 1 mil. So you'll need your pipette, which measures 1,000 microliters. So make sure it's set to the correct volume. Make sure that your Bunsen flame is turned to the blue flame because we do need to work aseptically. And you also need your blue tips. So the blue tips go with the pipette that measures a thousand microliters. So pop a tip on to your pipette and then working aseptically we need to transfer one mil of the stock culture to our first bottle to create the one in ten dilution. So, using the crook of your finger, loosen the lid of the bottle, flame the neck of the bottle, collect one mil, flame the neck of the bottle, replace the lid, grab your 10 to the minus 1 bottle, remove the lid, flame the neck of the bottle, transfer the one mil of stock culture, flame the neck of the bottle and replace the lid. Once you've done that, you can eject your pipette tip into the pipette bucket. Before we do the next dilution, we need to make sure that our 10 to the minus one dilution is mixed properly. So to do that, we use the vortex. So turn the vortex on and then hold the bottle in the vortex until the solution swirls around for a couple of seconds and then it should be thoroughly mixed. So to perform the 10 to the minus 2 dilution we need to grab a new tip on our pipette and aseptically transfer one mil from the 10 to the minus 1 bottle. So using the crook of your finger remove the lid of the bottle, flame the neck of the bottle, collect one mil, flame the neck of the bottle Replace the lid, 
Loosen the lid of the 10 to the minus 2 bottle. Flame the neck of the bottle. Transfer the 1 mil. Flame the neck of the bottle. Replace the lid. And then eject your pipette tip. Again, we need to make sure this solution is mixed properly. So we use the vortex. Give it a quick mix for a few seconds and then it's ready to perform the 10 to the minus 3 dilution. So we collect a fresh tip using the crook of our finger, remove the lid of the bottle, flame the neck of the bottle, collect one mil, flame the neck of the bottle, replace the lid and transfer it by removing the lid of our 10 to the minus 3 bottle, flaming the neck of the bottle, transferring one mil, flaming the neck of the bottle and replacing the lid. Eject your pipette tip. Give it a mix on the vortex. And then keep performing the dilutions from 10 to the 3 right up to 10 to the minus 5. So it's really important when you are performing a serial dilution that it is a one person operation. So one person in your group should be serially diluting the solution just to ensure that it stays nice and sterile and clean and that nothing becomes contaminated and you don't get mixed up with what solution is being transferred to which tube. When you've completed the dilutions, make sure that you do give your last bottle, the 10 to the minus 5 dilution, a mix as well. If you have a look at your dilution series, you can note two things. You will see that the 10 to the minus 1 dilution is still quite cloudy, and then from 10 to the minus 2 onwards, it's very difficult to see cells suspended in there. The other thing you might note is that each of the tubes, 10 to the 1 to 10 to the minus 4, contain 9 mils of solution because we were transferring 1 mil and then our final 10 to the minus 5 bottle contains 10 mils of solution. So it is okay to leave that extra one mil remaining in the 10 to the minus five dilution. It shouldn't affect your actual spread plate or the number of colonies that will grow for the 10 to the minus five dilution. But if you are a perfectionist, you can remove that one mil. So what you need to do is using a nice clean fresh tip, aseptically remove one mil from the 10 to the minus five dilution. So using the crook of your finger, remove the lid of the bottle, flame the neck of the bottle, collect one mil, flame the neck of the bottle, replace the lid and then eject that tip with the one mil of solution into your pipette container. So now your cereal dilutions are complete, you'll be able to move on to spread plating them.